Today is August 6th, and the Yankees just split a four-game set to the Phillies, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk all about it. We're going to talk Yanks. On that episode, we're going to talk Yanks. Steaming hot takes. Get your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Yanks. My name is Jimmy. Sitting next to me is Jake, and we are coming to you live from the Roosevelt Studios. That's R S V L T S in the Bronx. Producer BBD behind the plate. How's everyone doing? Thank you for joining us. The Yankees played four games against the Phillies. A lot of old friends. They won two, they lost two. Some people did bad, some people did well. Jake did well. Jake, how are you? James, I'm doing okay. Uh, Almost a very electric ending to that game. This Yankees team has shown they will fight to the end, which we like. And uh, was something I've kind of wanted to track with a lot of the... A lot of the good teams throughout this 60-game season. You can't really have full-out punt days. And the Yankees, even on a day, the first game of the doubleheader... Almost turned into a pretty special moment itself, but I'm doing all right. Uh, some serious questions, some serious discussions have come from this series. Like, I, I forget if I tweeted it or maybe I said it on, on one of the Talking Yanks. It's been a lot of rainbows and butterflies. And compromises and all the things. Yanks were moment. what, 8-1 and one at one point? And yeah, they're 9-3 and three now. You, you know, you just... When you're riding eight and one to start a season like this with a team like this, you kind of forget what regular baseball emotions feel like, and we got a dose of that this week. So uh, we're double header. I'm doing generally well. We're recording at a semi normal time, 10 p.m. Might might get home before the cows come running. So how are you? You live in a weird neighborhood. I'm good. I do. My left eye is itchy. Okay. So keep a, this one. Don't touch it. Don't no, touch I, it. You're touching it. I think the contact's just drying out because it's been in there for a while. Okay. I'm good, man. I, I think like you know if if um, fans are coming here looking for doom and gloom, um, you're not going to find it. I think that's kind of always how we are. But you are going to find a little more hotter takes out of me. Ooh. A little more. I'm done with some guys. Damn. I'm ready for other guys. I'm not going to tell you. That you're being impatient sure. or anything like that. There's a lot going on. Yes. That I have told you. We get to the office at 8.30. Yeah. I told you at like 9 o'clock in the a.m. I got a lot of Yankees stuff I want to talk to you about. But yeah. we've been tabling it. We've been together all day. It's now 10 p.m. at night. We've been tabling it. So I'm ready to unload, unleash, mm-hmm. and talk to you about the Yanks. Unload, unleash, and uh, what's another U word? Up, upload to update. the podcast app. Update. Update. Urshela. Urshela. That's a good one. Yeah. Uncle Jake? Dan Ugla. People have been calling you Uncle Jake recently. I've been getting some creepy uncle vibes, and I get it. Thank you to all the fans. We appreciate you. Thanks to the live patrons in the chat, Jim. Yeah. They've been, there's a couple people in the chat that have been riding with us all day from your morning show to Wake and Jake to JJR to talking baseball pregame show to talking Yanks pregame show to now we thank all of you so much um you guys you guys make it fun yep uh we got four games to burn we got so many big things A to talk lot about to do and are going down Hap, Monty, Paxton, Talkman. Is Andujar a pre or a post game thing? You're not giving an award, right? No, we can't. He didn't do anything on meaningful on any games, right? Not on the team anymore. Uh, we can talk about Andujar right now. I mean, let's do it. Let's do it. I think that we'll give the people a little some juice to start. <laughs> I think that's like a plum. Like a plum. Feel it in my plums. I think that this is okay, and yeah. I don't think it's indicative of a bad future for Andrew Hart. I don't think the Yankees are saying, we don't want you anymore, we don't believe in you anymore. They're just straight up saying, 
Miggy, you missed all last season. You're going to need every day at bats to get back into the rhythm of things. We cannot afford to give you those in a 60 game season with a stacked roster. It sucks for you. It sucks for us. Obviously, we wanted you to hit your way to keep staying on this lineup because they gave him more chances than anyone else. They put him out there a bunch. They tried to get his back going. It it didn't work. Um, You know, it sucks, but it, it, it's not a bad move. Like, he shouldn't feel terrible. Yankees shouldn't feel like they're being mean guys. It's just kind of 60-game season. We don't have time. You clearly need every day at bats, and we can't get you them here. It's tough, for sure. I mean, a lot of big Andujar fans out there, and rightfully so. He was special when he was right. Somewhere Brandon Drury laughs. Hmm. But it is the right move, and Andujar needs reps. His swing was off. He yeah. was... He was out trying to do all the classic I'm not right tricks. He was he was chasing the first pitch. He was going for some pitches out of the zone. He was he was trying to do it all and we forget, man. I mean, he missed all of last year. You know, he he played in what? 7 games, 3 games, something like that. Like 12. I I mean, he I don't know. he genuinely pretty much missed all of last year. He had like a stretch where like he played for a week and he, we were like, "What?" He has a little bit of a spring training ramp up, but the focus of his spring training is versatile Andujar. He's playing left field. He plays first base now. He's having a good time. 3 games? 12. 12. 12. Ah, three fingers. I bet. Um Andujar needs to go down. It sucks that there's no minor league season for him to get game rep at bats, but, you know, we do have a nice little <laughs> squad forming down there. So just get your swing right, and when it's time, which it, there will be a time this season we need Miguel Andujar, you know, just make sure you're tuned in. Don't try to do too much. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, coming off a huge shoulder injury and then just not getting any reps and with the what the rest of these guys on this team can do right now, uh, there's no spot for him So, you know, it's tough I'm sure Miguel Andujar didn't like the news They gave him both games in the doubleheader Which was like, hey, here's eight at bats, man Like, show us that we shouldn't And he gave them no reason to So, mm-hmm. uh, it's a little bit of a bummer Go get right We'll uh, we'll probably end up seeing him sooner than we think Oh, I disagree I'm talking injury-wise Still disagree Okay I, I got high spirits that everyone's gonna stay healthy I do too, but <laughs> I don't think we'll see him like as a starter for the rest of the year. I mean, there's a chance. I just think the injury bug comes, man, and right now he's the first call. We're, you think nobody's going to get hurt the rest of the yeah, year? We're totally healthy. I mean, that would be badass, man. I'm yeah. with you. It'd be awesome. Um, I I think Andujar will have a part in this season coming up. Uh couldn't tell you if it's a big one or a little one, but I mean, he, I think he finds his way back on the roster, and hopefully, he looks like the the helicopter that we fell in love with. A helicopter. That's not it. All right, can you burn game one? Let's get it moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. On your mark, gets. I don't. I I don't remember this game. On your mark, sure. gets. Let set. me help. Burn the old one game set. Garrett J. Cole versus Jake Sucks Arietta for our eyes only in the Bronx. Let's start off by Robo Trippin'. The Machine, DJ LeMahieu, lead off homer. In the third, J. Bruce Wayne says no to Robin as he goes solo. But that's all they'd get off the Yankees' Batman. Six innings pitch, one earned run from Cole. Meanwhile, it wasn't his butler. It was the gardener, Uncle Brett Yabo. Followed by a Hicksy RBI double, makes it 3-1. to one. You can run into my arms. It's okay, don't be alarmed. Come in to me. There's no distance in between. I love Ashella, Ella, Ella. A 6 1 after the three run Urshela homer. Phil's put up a couple late on Krisky and Avalon. Don't care. But the Yankees travel on to win 6 3 final. You went deep in that one. It was a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. We still haven't seen Cole have his A plus stuff, right? No. Um, I'm not mad about it. No, and we're not mad about it. I mean, four four strikeouts over six innings. I mean, that's you know, 
He's three and zero on the season, two five five ERA. So we're we're obviously we haven't seen the like spooky call, like the thirteen K call. We thought this would be the day because it was the Phillies' first game back. Didn't exactly happen, but he ends up looking good. I mean, ninety one pitches. Uh, we'll see. And I I guess you know if the question in Yankee Land is you know Cole's A stuff is, you know does he. Does he develop into that and it starts a roll of A stuff? Does the A stuff come around once every five starts? What does that look like? We're still not sure uh, about our what our shiny new toy looks like, but it's it's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, this was another. This was the formula. This was the last game of the formula where the Yankees get an early lead. They hit some home runs. They're up like five. They're up two to five. Two to two it was to four it runs. Was three one. It was boring at, through the third, and then it was six one, and it was like okay, game over. Yes. And it's just fun. Yeah, it was, this took us to eight and one, and it was like, well, here we are. It was boring, fun. The game was canceled the next night already. It was, uh, it was all right. Uh, Cole to Krisky to Green to Avalon to Britain, um, and then Holder showed a little face there. So, um, what, what did Holder do? I don't know. He keeps showing up in the box scores, and I like feel like he did pop out. Did we pick somebody off or something? Um. I don't know, maybe he didn't come in. They're saying he came in, but he didn't throw any pitches. So why is he in the box score? Maybe it's just an error. I don't know. Baseball reference, get your stuff together. It's on ESPN2. I know that is one that I copied directly over from pinch? Did he pinch run? I don't know. Not sure. Is anyone in the chat now? Maybe it's just a clerical error. Those damn clerical errors. Yeah. Ford gets to start at first base, which yes. pisses Void off. Yeah. He's not excited about that. Yeah. And that's really it. I mean, DJ Homers. The Gardner Homer, was that the oppo? Uh, or was that the next game? This, I believe, was the Gardner oppo Homer. Let me see. I could get in there. Uh, the other story, I mean, I mentioned it in song. Uh, Gio Urshela. Three-run homer. Um so that was kind of one of the storylines that came from this game is like, holy smokes, I think Geo might be real. And yes, this was the opposite field, Guardy Homer. Yeah, off Arietta. So that was surprising. Very the yeah. ball I think we're getting the mixed bag of balls, the juice stuff, because we had another Homer in this series that didn't feel like a Homer. I forget who it was. I I mean Gary's? Knowing the stuff we do know about the balls from Dr. Meredith Wills. I would assume that we have a grab bag of balls. That's why pitchers are throwing them out all the time. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's move on to game two. Okay. You ready? I think so. We have four burns. Let's keep it going. Keep it moving. On your mark. Get set. And burn, Jakey Burn. Let's play two as it's wheels up for Zach and his fills versus Jay Cutler Happ. Gets a final shot to not get divorced by the Yankees fan base. The Yanks jump to a 3-0 lead after, why is Brett Gardner on this team? Because he hits dingers. Hap rolling into the third and oh no. After an 0-2 fastball to Harper ends up in the Dagobah system. Hap might have walked himself out of the Yankees rotation. Six walks for the veteran lefty. Three innings pitch, four earned runs, and a terrible watch. Nick Nelson gets tortured by an equal mix of the Phil's offense and the Yanks defense. Seven earned runs. Oh, Nelly. Yanks put a nice little rally on the shoulders of the bullet. Tyro Estrada, and oh yeah, that judge guy too, three-run homer. Angel Hernandez is awful at his job, and the Yanks lose 11-7. This. Now we're back. We, Rain out. We needed this header. game. Ooh. A true stinker. A dud. You want to walk away saying, we got it all out. Yeah. Just a terrible game. Hap, do you want to do this now or do you want to wait till the awards? I think we'll wait to the awards. Uh, You're probably giving them pride. Three innings pitched, four earned runs. Six walks. The six walks were devastating and tough to watch. I think only one of them might have been close. The others were just bad. Felt really bad for Nick Nelson. Nick Nelson, tough he break. He induced about seven out. I'm not joking. I think he induced about seven outs and got two, three. It's, uh, I mean, it's about as savage as a baseball box score can look. 1.2 innings, seven runs, six earned. 
You would think he pitched awful if you just saw those numbers. Yeah, I mean, he didn't look good, but he didn't get a lot of help. He gave up a home run. Like The home run's fine. He wasn't the Nick Nelson we saw on opening night and we're like, does he replace Canely? Uh, I think, no strikeouts. Yeah, I think if... Like the D I didn't think if they him, make the first three plays and it's a solo home run and then out of the inning, we're not saying he looked bad. Yeah. I used to play that game with Jonathan Holder, and now he's a stud. No. Teaser. Can't, Nick Nelson was fine. They, it was honestly the like six... Under 50 mile per hour exit velocity balls in a row. The defense just didn't make a single damn play. It was tough. There was some Babbitt block. The defense was great. Nelson, he wasn't great by any means either. He wasn't throwing out Ks, but he was getting outs if the defense just literally makes a basic play. They sabotaged Couldn't him. turn the double play. They attempted three. Can't assume it. Attempted three double plays. And then there's some other just botched plays. Higgy just straight up didn't catch a ball at home. Yeah. It was as ugly as it gets. Then Phil Nevin gets ejected. Whole lot of fun. Nevin, friend of the pod. Um, yeah, made for a good breakdown. Check that out. John Boy Media YouTube. They did make a little comeback, which is kind of what this team's doing, which, hey, you know, you, you hate to be down and always rooting for the comeback, but they are making teams battle till the very end. You'd rather that than giving up and dying. So I know that you don't want it to be too prideful of it, you know, like I heard some people saying, like, we can't get down and just wait for the big comeback homer every game. And I agree. Yeah. But they're making bullpens work and going to the last out a, a, a lot. So I'm. it's better than laying down and dying. Credit to the Yankees for rallying a little bit. A lot of credit goes to the Phillies bullpen for being terrible. Um, and, yeah, I mean, hey, they were in, in a game that was 11-3 heading into the last inning. They were a missed Angel Hernandez call from being having the tying run at the plate. Yeah, so brutal call. That's kind of impressive. Um, Angel Hernandez, he's awful for the game. Uh, it's unbelievable when you actually think about how long he's been bad at his job. How many fans of baseball know who he is and know him because he's bad at his job? Yeah. Um, so that's that's just really disappointing sports wise. I mean, you know, like like you and I were saying on the pregame show after this game in the doubleheader, you know, that you can't anticipate ever coming back from eight runs down no. in the final inning. But the fact that they gave it a scare and with a right umpire call, they would have had the tying run up, kind of cool. And um, and they made a good point that they brought in Neris, their closer, yeah. to get one out so Joe didn't, Girardi didn't bring him into the next game and they came back off of the relief the reliever, Tommy Hunter. So that comeback did lead yeah. to an easier comeback in game two. And by the way, it, it goes overlooked. Andujar, he hit a pretty <laughs> decent fly ball. I mean, it's just, it, it didn't really, it didn't Same have a chance. Same as the white one in game four. It, it didn't have a great chance, but it's one of those, you can drive yourself crazy in baseball because, okay, say, you know, the bat was a centimeter higher, that ball gets out. We're here. They probably don't send Anuhar down. We're probably, yeah. you know, it's it's a really, it's a mind F of a sport. But, uh, yeah, they show some fight. They lost. The they chat has bad. the holder thing. They brought him in. They must have officially told the umps holder's going to come pitch the next inning. And then the rain delay happened. Right. And he must have been, you know, they thought he got too hot in the bullpen and didn't want to cool him down, so then he didn't pitch again. Pretty interesting. There it is. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks live patron chat. Yep. All right. Next game, just move it on. This game's a bummer. We'll talk about a lot of bad. Yeah, first seven inning game in Yankees history. Attempted seven inning game in Yankees history. I didn't like them. They didn't make no. me mad, but it did. It did. I mean, you watch nine inning games your whole life, so obviously yeah. it's going to feel weird. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, it was funny seeing the, you know, an hour apart between the. Oh, thank God, this is seven innings to. Ah, I wish it wasn't seven innings. Fun seeing that on Twitter. Yeah, man, you're right. And I uh, we've joked around about doing. If you're gonna do these, maybe have like a mercy rule. Which, ironically, the Yankees almost made it a game eight runs down. So that yeah, don't do it. That would have been funny. Yeah, they they didn't feel right. I think uh, still be okay with them for this year. Again, think the players of every, loved them. Think of everything else going on in the world. Um, Did you hear that? Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't they? You know, saves them a couple hours at the ballpark. Um. Yeah, it didn't feel weird. I told you, you know, I got ready essentially for one baseball game. So by the second game, I was kind of dragging. Where if I'd got built up 
for a doubleheader, you're like ready to go for seven hours of baseball. And yeah, I know uh, Jenny just mentioned it in the live chat. The strategy in seven inning games with new pitching staffs kind of blows. Slash, the Phillies having Wheeler and Nola lined up puts them in kind of an awesome position. I'm excited for Saturday when we have Cole and and maybe Schmidt, maybe bullpen day lined up. Yeah, we we will see. So it it's weird. I'm fine with it for this year, but yeah, man, it didn't uh, didn't feel great. Nope, didn't feel great. Let's go to the nightcap of the doubleheader, game mm, three. Nightcap, remember that. On your mark, get set. Oh, burn. How about some New Orleans Italian food with some whiskey? Lasagna versus Nola for the nightcap. Nola looked good, but he was no match for the king. King Louis V unleashes his wrath. On a curveball, home run. Andrew Knapp ties it up with a sleepy single. Locked up at one early, and it stayed that way till late. Only seven innings in this one in top seven. G-Unit is in the club with a single. Voight joins him in the candy shop with a single of his own. Gary thinks many men wish death upon him with a hit-by-pitch. And with the bases loaded, Mike Talkman reminds everyone he is a PIMP. Big RBI double. Urshela gets just a little bit with an insurance RBI single. Loizaga to Avalon to the Goose to Rugiato to Britain. Yanks split the doubleheader by winning 3-1 final. This was a fun one. Nola this absolutely shut the Yankees one. down. Fun seeing Aaron Nola pitch as long as the Yankees won, which they did. He looked great. He was fun. He was... Uh, talent. He was a new school talent with old school pitcher feels. He was different times through the rotation. He'd go curveball or change up, and then he'd mix them both. He uh, he was really cool. Excited that Philly fans get to watch him. Yeah, what I liked is that. Check this out, Jake. I'm going to check this out for you. Nola goes six innings pitched, three hits, one earned run. Right. 12 punchies? 12 punchies, but everyone's saying how good Nola looked, right? How great he is. He did. The Yankees go Lasagna, Avalon, Green, Ottavino for their first six innings. Three hits, one earned run. Yeah. Matched them. Matched them. So as good as Nola looked, Lasagna, Avalon, Green, Otto matched them. So, like, all the love Nola's. And, he like, you know, he looked more fun. Maybe not as fun as Chad. Maybe we'll get to that later. But... The bullpen day worked. And also fun. everything we just said about seven inning games benefited the Yankees here. <laughs> That's what Boone's quote was. Yeah. Uh, didn't a, like him in the first one, liked him in the second one. Exactly. They go to Tommy Hunter, and, Oof. I mean, the Phillies bullpen's bad. As we saw, they, they got a lot of hits on these guys. And, I don't know, nice little comeback there. I mean, single, single, double, hit by pitch, single. It's just... It and was, then Britain, Britain with the easy save, ground out, fly ball. It was ground just back-to-back-to-back to back to back locked in at bats. Like when you see in the playoffs a team hunkers down and they watch every pitch, they spit on the balls off the plate, they're locked in, they follow off the touch pitches. It felt like that every at-bat. I mean, Stanton single, Voight single, Talkman with the double in the gap, uh, Gary with the hit-by-pitch, Urshela with the single. Like, you know, it's that everyone... Everyone always talks about how much they want this instead of the home runs, and they did it. Yeah. Uh, Avalon, can I talk about him now? I think so. And now I think I'll travel on to Avalon. He's a part of the team? He is a part of the team, and uh, kudos. I was very surprised to see him finish an inning, right? Not surprised to see that. He replaces Lasagna. He goes and gets Didi, the lefty. Then Segura, and then he comes back in the face, um, Bruce, which is a lefty, you know. But I was just like, "Oh, we're gonna use this guy and in a one-one game for four batters or three batters." Kudos to producer BBD. Did you see his tweet about Avalon? I did not. His career stats are really good. What do you think Avalon's career ERA is? Three four three two eight. That's good. Three hundred forty-five innings. Um, Really good career against lefties. There's one outlier in his career, Jim. BBD pointed this out as well. It was last year, and guess where he pitched last year? The Mets. The New York Mets, who ruin everyone who ever walks into That's their bullpen. That's as Metsy as it gets. It's as Metsy as it gets. So, <laughs> to see that, 
Um, <laughs> like it's if you look at his stat page, I mean, you'll be blown away. 2016 Dodgers, a 3 2 ERA. 2017 Dodgers, 2 9 3. Uh, White Sox and Philly combined in 2018, 377. Last year with the Mets, 506. He's he's a quality major league reliever who's done it for nine years, and I think we laughed. He was a guy that was added, you know, to the sixty man, forty man, and we're like, oh, here come one of these expendable bodies. You watch how quick the pitching moves, and Avalon has a home in the Yankees bullpen. I mean, for a while, if not throughout all this. Yeah, I think he's you know going to stay. Speaking of old lefty relievers, career ERA plus one twenty one, Jim. I know you like that. Preston Claiborne just followed me on Twitter. Got him. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Avalon's like a part of the team, which, you know, it was just like an eye-opening thing, like, oh, I get it now. You like him. Yeah. And then I retroactively just saw BBD's treat via hearing it from you. Right. He's good. He's kind of, he's had a really nice major league career. Pretty cool. Um... What else? Nothing? Go to the next game? Uh, Got a lot of conversations to get three, through awards. Just a really strong rally. Nola was dirty. Lasagna did what he's been doing all year. I think... Uh, you want to talk about Adovino now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. They're messing with Adovino. Now, they may very well be saving him because he's gassed out a lot in his life. Second half Adovino was a thing that the Colorado Rockies told us about. Fans. And I think did Creaseman tell I us? I think the stats. And, yeah, the stats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's gassed out last year in the playoffs, like gassed out. They're using him as a, a one-out reliever. And you can see his demeanor in the bullpen where he's just kind of like, guess paid me a lot of money to be a lights-out reliever. You don't trust me? And it just seems like he's getting dicked around a little bit. But maybe it's fine. A lot of people on Twitter were telling me he sucks versus lefties. He He – he really last year he was. It doesn't uh, suck for his lefties. He's just unbelievable against righties. Yes, yes. Because I looked at the stats because I was like, he's bad against lefties, and I was like, no, he's not. He lefties hit a little bit better off of him, and only in 2019, last year, is there an actual difference? Like in 2018, it's everyone hit bad against him. And again, I think he was he was kind of the dude out of the Rockies pen. He was their their go getter in twenty eighteen. Seventy seven point two innings pitch, one hundred twelve strikeouts. He got six saves that year. He had two for the Yanks last year. But as the season went, they started using him differently. They really liked him and Canley as like the righty lefty weapon. And yeah, we'll see. I in my head, I think if that game stayed tied, Otto would have came out for the final inning. He only threw three pitches. Um, Britton ends up coming in for the save. Eight-pitch save, by the way. How about that, Zach Britton? But, uh, yeah, you know, we'll see. And there's some merit to what you're saying, but also it's a 60-game season. Like, we're not going to be burning him out over 162. You just never – I wonder if, if uh, they start to ramp up the workload. But I do worry, like, and you said this a lot last season when they were doing this with Canley, like, you're set – you're – Breaking his confidence It just got weird Like yes they both are so Dominant against the other side But yeah they almost pulled the Plog, plog. they almost pulled the plug That's against the Otto. plug and the clog The plug the and the clog time. against Against Otto so yeah man um, I don't know he's He's coming off you know everyone Probably remembers against Houston where Otto you know kind of Became the weak link and almost unusable So I mean, maybe it is a long buildup. We'll see. We'll see going forward. I mean, the the guys around him, you know, not to deep dive, but Britain's looked really good. Um, Chad's looked really good. So you know, right now, the the piece to kind of key in on in on Otto is, and he's been good. You know, five games, four innings pitched. He hasn't given up a run. So hopefully, it's a buildup. And yeah, I don't know. A little weird. Good tidbit from Rob in the chat. 35 pitchers injured in the first week or something like that. Like, there has been a lot. So, maybe it's smart. Take it easy. And that's, you know, the behind-the-scenes stuff that we'll never find out. Yeah. You know, maybe Otto says he he doesn't feel fully built up or something. No, like you that. can 
He's yeah. wearing his emotions on his sleeve every time they show him in the dugout. He always the does. Yeah. Yeah. You got to like, like it and Gatto. dislike him. Oh, of course I like He's Gatto. himself. Yeah. He's yeah, 100% like him. himself. One more burn. So we got to get to these t- conversations. Yeah, yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. Hap. Ishkaba, Ishkaba, Ishkaba. Ishkaba, Ishkaba, Ishkaba. On your mark, Jake. On your set, Jake. Get your gears in motion and burn, Jake. It's the last of three or four. Who knows? It was weird Corona times. The first game was a one-game set or something. Gumby, the full Monty versus Led Zeflin, Zach Eflin, as one team would climb the stairway to heaven in the city of brotherly love. That sentence was word vomit. Bottom one, he is the real Mudo. Three-run shot for JT. Fills up early. Top two. Let's give them something to talk about. Two RBI single to drink about. Three, two, Philly after two. Phil Gosselin, I don't care about you. Two RBI double. Jordan was wearing the four, five. Four innings pitched, five earned runs. Not great, Bob. Hale and Holder holds while the Kraken cracks. El Gary, two run homer. Please let that slump be over. 5-4, 5-4, the Yanks put up a fight, but it was not their night. Yanks lose and split the series, I guess. I don't know. Nice. Yeah. The series stuff is nonsense. Just four games. There was Yanks were a home team in Philly for the first game. But they didn't wear their other roads. But Someone on like the, the YouTube roads. breakdown was like, how could the Philly Yankees be batting in the bottom of the ninth? They're in Philly and wearing the away uniforms. I'm like, dude, really good call. Yeah. Hate to break it to you. I had like a zone out moment in that first game of the doubleheader, and then I like, like turned on the lenses again when the Yanks were rallying because they were down so big. So I was like, okay, what's going on? It's like bottom, bottom seven with the game. Yanks and the Grays. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. A lot to take in. And you got a squirrel brain. Well, what did you just say into the mic? Me. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't think it was me. Getting squirrely. What did you just say? We just watched this game. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. Listen. Listen. There's concerns about the team. They're playing six games in four days. They're going to put out lesser lineups. You know, Judge played both games of the doubleheader. I'm guessing he's going to play both games of the doubleheader on Saturday, Friday, and Sunday because he had a day off on Monday. Yeah. It's it's gonna happen. Whatever. I don't I don't I don't really care. And I said this when they changed the playoff format. I'm not gonna be on edge every loss like I thought I was gonna have to be. They just need to be in the top two teams. And it's looking like they're still running away with top team in look their good. division. They look good still. There's a lot of problems. I don't care about the punt day. The um the Yankees were a little too focused on Will Little and his terrible zone, which was terrible. Sure, I think they gave it a little too much more attention. It seemed like they let it get into their head uh, more yeah. than just dealing with it. It got, it got into both teams' head. It got in the Yankees' head first. Yeah, I mean you could see they were yeah. taking pitches and then ready to fight with the ump yeah. before, like that was their pri- It seemed like that was on their mind. I'm gonna take this pitch and then we're gonna fight instead of like. Let me, okay, that's his zone. It yeah. sucks. Let me work around it. So I think they got, Will Little's zone sucked. I think the Yankees got in their own heads about it way too much. Yeah, you're not wrong. And I think, you know, Boone went out there to complain about the fans because there's the fans horns. outside of Philly being being pretty Philly. And then, you know, after that, the Yanks actually started getting some of the same calls, and that's when Philly got mad. So, yeah, everyone started doing the dance for a little bit. And, Jim, you just made a really good point, and it's jumping ahead a little bit. I assume they would have the same game plan for the upcoming doubleheader, but with the off day Monday, they probably will run Judge out all three of those games, Saturday and Sunday. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, they could not, you know. And like you're saying, like, injuries are bound to come. Boone's and them, they're trying yeah. to do everything they can to not have injuries come. It was Judge's first off day, and if this was a normal regular season, he would have been out through June. <laughs> yeah. So it's really weird taking these things into perspective. It's the same thing we did with Anduhar. You need to do it with a few other guys. You need to do it with Hicks. You need to do it with Stanton. Like, you need to do it with Judgey. These guys would have been hurt to start the season. <laughs> kind of wish they'd do it with Paxton, but that's another thing. Uh, so, yeah, it, it sucks because they got the rally kind of bones going, and they even used Judge and DJ, which I do like. 
you know, it's a 60 game season. You guys, we're, we're going to sit you and rest you, but be available to use. Off. Yeah. Um, so, so that's good. And it, it just didn't happen. They put a couple swings on it. I mean, we were, you know, a centimeter away from talking about Luke Voigt hitting a game changing home run and how we're coming back in every game this season. It didn't happen. It's baseball. And we move on. Yeah, Monty didn't look great. Monty did not look great. Uh-huh. He fell in love with that curve because it did look nice early on. But then the Phillies were very quick, like three run homers, very quickly like, oh, just hit that if that's what you're going to throw for a strike right here. He was spiking him. He just didn't look clean. I don't think he looked exceptionally bad. It just looked, he just didn't execute. That's the baseball He didn't look great. I think this Phillies lineup does deserve a little credit. A team that we were wondering how good they were going to look at all. They looked pretty decent. They have a lot of experienced bats. I mean, you know, uh, just I'm looking at the box score now. McCutcheon was two for four, and his his first at bat was a line drive that was conveniently right at Glaber. So, I mean... You know, at Hoskins, Harper, Real Muto, these are all really good major league hitters. They made them work. There was only two lefties in the lineup. The guys that were lefty are Didi and Bryce Harper. So, you know, that, that ended up being pretty ha- tough for Happer and Monty. And, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, baseball's a, a game of inches, a game of a few pitches. And, you know, I think Monty in the third inning, his final two runs he gave up, I think they all pretty much came with two outs. So, you know, you're a pitch away and it doesn't happen. Uh, you know, same thing with Real Muto, I believe. So it's it's how baseball goes sometimes. It's it's not the sky is falling, but we did uh, – we were hoping for a good Monty start. And, I, you know, I kind of I, – I left this out. I wanted him to start yesterday. He was on five days, five days rest I or the normal rest. I get the argument because people were saying, well, you can bullpen and you can get through it, and they did. Um, well, I think what comes into play there is that today on game four, they had to go from 30 to 28. Sure. So in their mind was like, hey, we have extra relievers. Let's bullpen day the, when we have 30 guys instead of bullpen day when we have sure. 28 guys. And I, I get it. I, it makes sense. I, I do think there is something to a pitcher being regular, and especially, you know, Gumby right now is, you know, Tanaka is still very much building up his pitch count. I mean, Tanaka threw what, 50 bullets last time? 40-something? Yeah. So, you know, we we need stuff out of Gumby. So I, I kind of – he looked really good last start. I thought he should have got it. And it feels like the Yankees are delaying inevitable stuff with Clark Schmidt, which we will talk about coming up. So uh, I don't know. Again, it's it's delving into some stuff. They uh, they didn't win this game. That's a fact. They didn't win this game. Stone Cold fact. Yeah. They yeah. lost. All right, let's move it on. Let's move it on. Let's get into it, Jake. Good job by Hale and Holder. Yeah, Holder actually looks really good. That yeah. changeup looks as best as, as Change, good as it's ever looked. Changeup looks good. I've been saying for years that Holder doesn't really have a plus pitch. That changeup looked plus. The changeup looked good, and I know the fastball is not plus, but when he's right, hitters can't square it up. I don't know if it's late movement or whatever it is, but I think he hits his spots well sometimes with it. All right, let's move on to a war. Who goes first? I believe it's you. Yeah. I go first? Yeah. My pride of the Yankees? Yeah. I get to do it? You get to do it, kid. Wow. You're on the big show. What an honor. You're on the big show. The first award that we give out here on Talking Yanks is? Pride of the Yankees. Pride of the Yankees. Pride of the Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. My pride of the Yankees this week, it's Mike Talkman. Wow. I don't think a lot of people saw this coming. You can give it to a lot of guys. I mean, yeah. you can give it. It's a call if you wanted to be boring. I don't think yeah. Cole deserves it. No. You can go judge, you can, but I don't no. think he deserves it. You can go Geo again. Okay. Tough you know? when you're the second pick and you just start naming all the players. I'm just in case you hadn't made up your mind. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, thanks for do. that. Talkman, late hits. I mean, yeah. Talkman, he got four hits in this series, one walk, on base five times, a 455 on base percentage in the four games. I think he only played three of them. Uh, but his hits mattered and counted. Yeah. Is part of like keeping late inning rallies alive, getting it done at the end of the games. You want to win, you put Talkman in. Talkman and with in. Anduhar going down, Talkman needs to find regular playing time. Now, yeah. Gardner's also hitting crazy. You can give Gardner your pride if you want to. 
Thank you. Hicks is having decent at bats. Ugh, kinda. He's getting walks. Talkman needs to be in more. Yeah. And like you said, I think they can find a nice rotation between Talkman, Hicks, who's coming off surgery, and Gardner, who's old. I just want to see him play. I like the intensity he brings. I like the focus. I don't know if you guys caught this, but when Judge hit that three run homer in game two, Talkman had a long meeting with him before Judge walked up to the plate. Definitely gave him something. I think he told him he was tipping. Uh, a lot of people. Fantasy football. A lot of people told me you could see the glove was higher on the fastball, and Judge was just squaring up the fastball. But, dude, he's in it. Yeah. What did Wade say when we told him we interviewed Talkman? He just looked at us and said, thorough. Thorough. Dude studies. Attention to detail. Football player. He's in. Watches the tape. Anything a football player does, Mike Talkman does. You want to win, put Talkman in. Talkman looked good, man. He got the leadoff hole tonight. He ends up getting two hits. Um, I did this on the pregame show. I mean, since joining the Yankees, 865 OPS, so 129 OPS plus. I think both those numbers go up slightly tonight. Uh, with, I mean, grade A defense. And, again, like, look at, you know, it's been a short start of the season, but it's a short season. And we, we you and I have done some Andujar Talkman stuff. Like, what would we be saying right now if Andujar got off to a hitting 330 and Talkman was hitting 100? You know, we'd probably be saying Andujar would be running out there and rotating in left field every day and instead of talkie. So, Taki went out and earned it when the Yankees wanted to give it to Andujar. Let's be honest. I mean, we did that last episode. We were saying that's their dream lineup. They love Andujar. Do you want to know his stats and games he started? Yes. He's appeared in seven games. Sure. Small. Small. He started four games. Still small. Yes, but in his substitute games, he's got zero hits. He doesn't really like coming off the bench. No, who does? When you give him the start. In the start. He's got a 500 on base percentage, a 455 batting average, a double RBI, two stolen bases because Talkie's running out there, a walk, RBI. I mean, start him. Yeah. He's thorough. Thorough. Thorough Talkman. Thorough. All right. I, Who's your part of the Yankees? I love the pick. and I don't think people saw it coming. I don't think so either. Um, I mean, the crowd's booing and stuff. They don't need to do that, but... I am going to piggyback a little bit, and yeah. there there were a couple guys that could do this, and, you know, unfortunately their caliber almost hurts them. You mentioned Cole. DJ LeMahieu ended up 6 for 12 again. Sick puppy. Like, the dude could have been the pride so easily. It goes to Brett Gardner. Ooh, damn. And He was my next award. Well, Jim, the whole thing is his conversation. If the stats are right, he went 5 for 10 this series, 4 runs, 3 RBIs, 2 home runs, led the team in homers. Why is he on this team? He still plays incredible defense. He's still the fastest down the first baseline, as you learned on Sharp Stats with Katie Sharp. She's the best. Always remind her of that. Jim, I want to talk about the outfield platoon. So you started going into it, and this this stuff gets me jazzed up. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm. Before you do that, I love the conversation. I need to erase my first award, which was an award I gave out last year sure. to Brett Gardner. Yeah. That I was going to re-give. Punky Russell. No. The quick question. Why don't you go fuck yourself award? Ah. Gardner's won it before. I was going to give it to him again. BBD late on the bleep button there. Okay. Come on, David. Let's get into the bleep. good stuff. Here. Oh, my God. Not now. <laughs> so late. <laughs> Motherfucker. I hate myself. Oh, opposite of the bleep button. So, let's think about this. Yeah. Hicks. The Yankees love Hicks. He plays very good center field defense when he's right. (laughs) Uh, Talkman, incredible defense. Crushes lefties and is good against righties. Brett Gardner, and I... Any of you little 14-year-old turds that follow us and want to start the Brett Gardner fight, like... If you want the smoke, I'm ready for it. Because guess what? Gardy was so good last year. Because, Jim, I didn't even put this together. Because, okay, you look at Gardy's numbers last season. He had an 829 OPS, 28 homers. He played 141 games. That's really good, right? Mm -hmm. Know what Brett Gardner was bad at last year? Getting on base. Hitting lefties. Oh. Like, that clearly kind of left him, and they still now that they have Talkman, who cares? 
Brett Gardner had an 892 OPS versus right-handed pitchers last year. An all-star level OPS with close to gold glove defense. Like, don't don't bring any of the Guardy stuff at me. You don't want it. And you sound like a fool online when you're arguing against Guardy. Because that means you are 13 and you don't know what your body feels like when you start to turn 30. Because he's turning 37 this month, I think. So, against lefties, there's no argument. You sit Uncle Brett. I like it. It's good. Good. Katie, Katie Sharps would be happy with you. Katie Stats. Katie Stats. Katie Sharp Stats. And then... So you have Hicks out there both times? No. Okay. Hicks is still coming off Tommy John surgery. Okay. And he's looked like Aaron Hicks. The defense has been a slightly suspect. He's still seeing a lot of pitches. We haven't seen the bat necessarily get hot, but he's taking pitches. He's doing Aaron Hicks thing. Between rotating off days, which we've got a lot of games coming up, and Hicks is still getting into it. Hicks didn't do spring training this year. And between resting the big guys, which is going to happen with uh-huh. a lot of games... I mean, you can get Talkman and Gardy and Hicks playing five di- five days a week, staying pretty well rested. They can play center, left, knock yourself out, throw them in right if we have to go through Jay Happ days, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But it's it's a really nice situation. Get Talkman some playing time. He's earned it. Hicks has like a 400 on base percentage, and he swung the bat once. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he... Uh, I mean, Hicks is going to Hicks. We Awful at bat in game four. We know this. He does have like a 400 on base with not a lot. He's a... Uh, do know, they have like do they have like Hicks like swinging strikes in this? Couple, couple bad routes to fly balls, which he should tighten up. And again, like that was... For Yankee fans, that was an aha moment for me when Andujar looked bad. Hicks was taking bad routes. I was like, what's going on with these guys? And I was like, they haven't played a lot of baseball. I was trying to find if he had swinging strikes versus taking, taking <laughs> like non-swing strikes. Do they have that? They have to have that somewhere, right? Maybe next sharp stats. I mean, it's got to be in the advanced stats somewhere. But, it's got to yeah. be somewhere. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I like it. Get Talkman in there. I mean, it's with Andujar down and Clint down, it, it seems pretty easy that that's what they're doing now. Rotate him in. A lefty starter, it's not even a question. Snell tomorrow. Sit Guardy. Put Talkman in. Put Talkman in. I like it. And then you got the doubleheader the next day, so you're going to rest them in some sort of way. You know, I, I just think it's – there's rarely a nice platoon. It's almost like two – or at least we haven't seen it on the Yankees a lot. This seems to be a nice situation. They can all play good defense. You know, like you said, <laughs> I think you said Brett's old. Um, you know, Hicks Hicks can be weird out there. Rotate them all in. Brett's old. Brett's old. I love him. Love him. Just quit being so mad at him all the time. Yeah. So weird. And again, I think, uh, you know, be okay if Judge and Stanton start getting one off day a week. Maybe not Judge if he's hot. One a week. Not a week. Not a week. That was dramatic. We've got two off days next week. So. Yeah. And then I'm assuming after that we have another big streak. So. Yeah. All right. You Yankee motherfucker. Who are you taking? You're up, kid. Oh, yeah. I'm up. Well, I'm going half. It's a good pick. 10 of 10 pick. I don't want him to make another start. Yeah. And I feel like in a 162 game season, after two starts, I'm not saying that. I'm over it, man. Yeah. I, like, I'm really, truly, truly don't want to watch him on the mound again. Yeah. What he did in this series was pathetic. Yeah. He had zero confidence in himself. So why would Cashman have confidence in him? Why would his defenders have confidence in him? Why would Boone have confidence in him? Like he, I almost made a highlight reel. I did. I edited it, but I didn't post it, of him throwing that same exact outside pitch just over and over and over and over and over and over again and over again and over again. For a ball. And he walked six guys. Six. In three innings. He didn't even try to get people out. Four pitch walk to Phil Gosselin to walk in a run. I don't know if the stats or analytics say like his mechanics are different or his spin rate's different or his velocities. I don't know any of that. It seems like he's healthy and he just 
I'm all, I'm over it. I would rather watch King or Clark Schmidt start and they go four innings and give up four and runs, but it's a learning curve and they're climbing the ladder to success and getting their career starting. Then watch Hap go out there and pitch four innings and give up four runs and and there's no end game yeah. anymore. So I know that you've been leading the Hap train. But I'm very interested to see where you're at with him. I think you jumped off yourself after that outing. That was as pathetic as pathetic gets. Dude yeah. w- refused to throw a strike. He was scared of the bats. I can, if you give up fly balls that sneak out of the stadium and we've got a mix of juice balls or we're playing at Yankee Stadium or whatever it is, I can find some wiggle room for you. I can figure something out. He... I won't say he looked okay. He was scoreless through the first two, and then he's got Harper 0-2, and he throws an inside fastball that was just like, you know, you can't put it anywhere near the plate. You're 0-2 J. Happ versus Bryce Harper. And then, I mean, the whole thing came out, unraveled. It, it was almost impossible to watch. Six walks. A guy that's made a very nice major league career. Out of being, you know, a, a str- control pitcher, a strike thrower, like a strike, a guy that could challenge people with his fastball, and I do think the numbers have ticked down, which is scary. And maybe Jay Happ has that in his head, and that's why he's not attacking. Maybe it was just one day he couldn't find the slot because he was missing in that one slot, seemingly every pitch. We'll see. Uh, so we've got the two, and let's just do this. We've got the two off days coming up, Monday and. Thursday next week I might have producer BBD double check that Which there's a two game set with the Braves in between I think they're gonna They will skip him I mean right now The scary thing is Paxton is lined up For Sunday which I mean do we not feel The same way about Paxton as we do Hap right now I mean for the product They're putting out not necessarily their Career wise different different Paths Pax, Same result. Yeah, but Hap I'm done with. Right. Paxton I want to fix. Okay. On the mound. No, I no, I want them to skip a Paxton start. And like they said he was working on his mechanics with Cole and Matt Blake. And like his mechanics are different. Katie told us that. His velocity's down. He's pitching as if he still has a 96 mile per hour fastball. Right. So I still think there's a way for Hap to get or Paxton to get out. Pitch differently. Change the pitch mix. Gotcha. Fix the mechanics. Take, skip a start, and try it. Like, I'm willing to give Paxton yeah. a couple more goes to try it. Because there's still plus side. He's young. Okay. He still should be in the peak of his career. He, he you know, if, if Paxton ends this season, it's not like he's retiring. Okay. He's going to get picked That's up. That's fair. Because I, I just, last time we talked, you had been saying you were pushing hard for IL stint, which. Yeah, if it, if it has to be a 10-day IL stint right. while he figures this out, sure, I don't care. With Hap, how he is. And if Paxton's saying he's not her, you almost can't IL him. Paxton? Yes. He would have to agree to it. Right. So if he doesn't agree with it, that's fine. But, if, but then, then we're down two starters. Yeah, but I, I'm not even – I'm really not even that worried about that during the regular season. Like, you okay. have Tanaka, Cole, you have, uh, uh, you have Tanaka, you have Cole, you have Monty. Bring up Clark, put him in the rotation – Get Paxton, skip a, st- skip a couple starts. If not, use Lasagna and and someone as a piggyback. Go Nestor. They did Nestor Chad like 15 yeah. times last season. Like, yeah. I'm not that worried about getting through the regular season with these starters. What we need to do is we need to get to the postseason with Cole, Tanaka, Monty, and Schmidt as the four ready to go pitching well. Or oh, Paxton, Tanaka. if he can get fixed by then. And not just Schmidt. But I'm not worried about the regular season. I, I don't want Hap back out there. I don't think there's any plus side anymore. With yeah. Paxton, I still think there's a way to get a plus side. You can't throw your 91-mile-per-hour fastball up in the zone with two strikes as if it's a 96. Are we doing Clark now? Were you going to give him an award? Can't. I wasn't going to give him an award. Team. Not on the team, yeah. Okay. We both want Clark up. I want them to call him up for the Saturday doubleheader. I don't know if they will. He's on path to be called up for that. Now, here, now stay with me. When they had 30-man rosters, they did not get the extra man for doubleheaders. So they didn't call up an extra man. Right. With 28 guys, I don't know if they're being given that or not. 
If they we're are, we're assuming they're getting a 29th man, but we're not sure. If they if they are getting a 29th man, you can easily call Schmidt up for the doubleheader, see how he pitches. You're probably going to like what you see because he's good. And after that, you can then decide, is, is, take Trapiano, put him off the roster, and keep Schmidt there. Chapman's also going to be ready at some point, so Chapman needs to come on the roster. And then I think, I don't know, it's Hull or, or Hull, it's uh, Hale or Holder. I don't know what you do. Tropiano. No, because I had Tropiano going for Schmidt. Okay. You can take a bat off for easily too. You can take Ford out. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, man. Like, how much is their bench right now? Wade, Ford, Higgy. Who am I missing? They sent down Tyro. They sent down Talkman. Higgy. Talkman. So that's a four man bench. They only have a four man bench right now. Wade, Ford, Higgy, Talkman. That's that. Is that right? Might be. They sent down Tyro and Miggy, right? Yeah. So that would have been a six-man bench. They didn't have seven, so yeah. Okay. We're so down that, to So four. that's it. You have to have four. Yeah. You have to have a four-man bench. So none of those guys are going down. So what I'd do is I'd bring up Schmidt. I'd have him pitch in one of the doubleheader games. I have Cole go first. I have Schmidt go second. I think he's on line for that. I'd skip Paxton and let him, like, if he doesn't want to go in the IL, fine, dude. Just you're getting skipped. We need you to work on things for so, a little bit more. So Paxton's lined up for Sunday. So then... Does that mean Schmidt's lined up for Sunday? For Kinda. What, from what we've heard. From what we've heard. Yeah. So if he can't pitch a doubleheader, I'd, I'd still I'd have him pitch. It's easier if he can pitch in the doubleheader game to do it and just call him up as a second guy and see what you got. But I, I'd, I'd make the move now. I don't know. I don't think they're going to, so I'm not predicting here. I'm just saying do what you I'd think, like to do. Do you think there's any chance that Clark Schmidt isn't on the team by this weekend? Yeah. I do, too. Yeah. And that's what's worried me because Yankees Twitter and Yankees Universe has gotten so excited about Clark Schmidt. But we haven't necessarily seen those hints from the Yankees since spring training. So I'm, uh, again, maybe this is just me trying to calm myself and everyone else down. In my head, he should have already been up. In my head, he could be up. He could very easily be up this weekend. In my head, he could also not be, which yeah, but makes I, me wonder if they're doing Yankee funny business and he's not part of the plan this year. They have him on with Paxton st- starts. Right. Which makes me think they're just waiting for Paxton to a- admit he needs an IL stint. Right. Um, I mean, there also is a chance, because, okay, let's say coming into the season, because Paxton was getting loose and... You know, they didn't necessarily know he was hurt, hurt. Like, he was dialing up. He said he was waiting to feel the juices, blah, blah, blah. Like, if they were going to bet on someone going into the season to line up Clark with, would it have not have been Hap? Yeah, and they didn't. So, okay. I, I mean, there's a chance that's a mistake. I don't know. I, I'm excited to see Clark. I unfortunately don't know if he's going to get the call. I could just be tempering my own expectations um, right well, now. Well, no, I, I think that's fine because I'm not predicting it. You're right. saying I would do it this weekend. Yeah. I mean, I think And and I am like I said, if our fifth starter is isn't Hap, I would rather Lasagna and King piggyback starts than right. throw Hap out there. And then you put Paxton to the side and you let Schmidt take his starts for now and and then if Paxton comes back, then the piggybacking of King and Lasagna ends and you have five starters there, but I get Hap out of here. I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to Keep Hap out there. I think we're going to see Hap and Paxson both make their starts in the next time through the rotation. That's what I, but I wouldn't do it myself. And this is the first time I feel like I'm really like, well, instead of trying to guess, again, saying let, I'm not. A, let me just get you a little more excited about it because they do have two off days coming up. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think they're going to be able to skip Hap. And then the next week they have a Wednesday off. So, uh, the Yankees might have a more zoomed out view than us. And have have a bigger plan that we're currently not thinking of. Um, I don't know. I think they skip Hat for now. I was surprised to see Paxton listed for Sunday. And again, that news could change very quickly. We'll see with the double header. Like you said, Chapman should be coming up, and that's a roster spot. Um, you know, that could be King. I mean, that could be Tropiano. Um, 
right now there's the two most expendable guys in the bullpen are Tropiano and King. Then you start getting into Holder Hale, which Holder, I believe, still has an option, so that could be fine, but he's kind of looked okay. Um, I don't know. I'm interested to see it play out. I think they were, I, I would make the move if I was them. I, I thought they were going <laughs> to instead of Tropiano. But. Well, if they want Schmidt to make a start, then it wouldn't have made sense to call him up just to rest him in the pen for a couple days. Well, they could have even done it in the doubleheader, or they could have done it today. You know? Yeah. Gumby yesterday, Schmidt today. So interested we'll see. to see how it plays out. Exciting conversation in Yankees land. Um, everyone's <laughs> – a lot of people have their own spin on it. I do think we see Hap start again. But someone, that, someone, that in, the, someone in the live chat asked about Davey. Davey isn't going to be part of this season. Yeah, I would uh, – For, like, good reason. He's clearly not ready. Yeah, I mean, I you know, who knows what's going on at that Yankee secondary camp, but – yeah, I would. There would have to be a decent amount of injuries to get to Davy. Clark's ahead of him. Yeah, 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 they won't even have Davy as a starter right now. And you just wonder how how much funny business they get into, man. All right, so that was the conversation we were dying to have. I mean, Ben, Hel- to, ben Heller's at the alternate site, and he's you know yeah. proven to be MLB ish. Yeah, you still got to give your MFR. My MFR, James. You like being called James? Don't Has it changed with age at all? Don't care. It's usually just girls that call me that, thinking Ooh. they're being funny. Thank you. My Yankee mf or I think this is back-to-back weeks. Yeah. I'm going Glaber. He uh, he just doesn't look good. He looks lost. He, looks, he looked as lost as Andujar and Gary. Andujar gets sent down. Gary gets the home run that hopefully gets him going. The high pitch thing's getting bizarre. Keeps swinging the pitches over his shoulders. I will, you know, say something nice about Glaber. His defense, he actually made a couple pretty nice defensive plays. So I just worry about him getting inside his own head so much. Like, this needs, we need something quick. And, again, I don't, who knows all the conversations, and Glaber's obviously a star, and he's going to continue being a star, but slide him down the lineup, you know. Well, they went down to five. Treat, so. treat him like treat him like one of the dudes. I mean, Urshela's been hitting the ball. Voight's been hitting the ball. Reward those guys. They slid Gary down to eight. He got the homer today. You know, uh, Glaber, it was kind of a joke thing, and then it was real, like the first when young Glaber was getting thrust into the cleanup spot and his numbers weren't as good. So, I, I don't know. Glaber doesn't need the pressure on him. It's not like he can't handle it or any of that stuff, but... Right now he looks lost. I think they gave him the rest day. He came back. He still didn't look good. Um, slide him down the lineup a little bit. Do it. It's no harm. Six hole Glaber. Aaron Boone indeed complained to the umpires about a Phillies fan outside the ballpark who was sounding an air horn. The environment we're in, it's almost like a golf environment. I thought there was a timing element to it. Wow. He's mad. Big man. We're an hour in, BBD? Damn, we've been talking. Big time. There's four been games. Big topics, four games. Four yeah. games, big topics. All right. My first award yeah. is illegal. Legal. Illegal. Just illegal. Stop that right now, sir. Illegal. You know who this is going to? Illegal. Illegal. Luis Sessa. No, wrong. <sighs> Chad Green. Yeah. They got traded together. So that's why maybe why you thought it. Yeah. A curveball? Yeah. A nice curveball. First, he's got one of the best fastballs going, just jackrabbit speed. Last year, his slider is his better pitch than the fastball. And now he's throwing a curveball? Not allowed? Yeah. That's confusing. And he's opening up at bats with a get me over knuckle curve that hitters have no idea it's coming. Can't touch it. Then he's throwing it in other counts as well with confidence. Yeah. What the heck? That's not allowed. It's just not allowed. Not allowed. That is not allowed. Just rude. Well, now, well, you hear about you hear about adding new pitches in spring training. Right. Usually they don't come to fruition. They get scrapped. Right. He's throwing the thing. He's throwing it, and it looks good. 
He's Can- so good, man. Canley told us. Canley told us all the go- guys were working on a knuckle curve. Yep. I mean, he's he's <laughs> dominant. He looks dominant, man. And that was the only the only piece of the puzzle that Chad was kind of missing was you could see the at bats last year when he didn't have his A plus stuff that his fastball and slider just weren't different enough. That you'd see these Chad eight, nine pitch at bats where guys would just follow it off until they got one they could handle. And it was it was like a slow, painful death almost. Cause Chad couldn't drop, you know, the seventy five on him. Now he's got a nasty curveball. That fastball cutter is still electric. It's one of the better pitches throughout baseball. He looks good, man. He looks really good. He is a weapon. His slider so far this season has had a lot more depth to it as well. I don't know if you care for these charts, but, like, Mm. that was the depth on it before, and it's just rocketed up there. So his slider has improved so far as well. Yeah. I mean, he looks really good. I mean, is he in this series, he pitched two – he pitched three innings and gave up zero hits and zero earned runs and struck out four guys. That's really good. On the season, he's pitched eight innings. He's given up one hit, and he's struck out 11 guys. And giving up zero earned runs, obviously. I mean, he could have gotten pride. I think. I would have. I would have danced it around. Yeah. But obviously, he gets the illegal award. Illegal. Not allowed. Not allowed. Not. Zero. Don't do it. Not fair. Good what's award, your, Jim. Thank you. What's your first award? Uh, I'm giving out the money award. The money. Money. You're so money right now, and you don't even know it. Money, please. I want the money. Mona Lisa Saperstein. Yo, who's getting the money award? The award goes to DJ LeMahieu. Um, he was 6 for 12 this series. And it didn't even flinch like, well, does he get pride? And it's like, no, he kind of did his thing. Comes in, gets a pinch hit, hit to keep the rally going late in this one. And Jim, we did this conversation a lot on voicemail episodes. Resign DJ LeMahieu And guess what They couldn't Because DJ LeMahieu's camp would have been asking for $25 million a year Because he had an MVP season last year The Yanks would have came back and said Well that's the outlier We'll give you 15 for the next three mm-hmm. He's the same dude I tempered my expectations all offseason Baseball's hard you know DJ LeMahieu could hit 290 Have a real nice year it's out of his mind. He hits it wherever he wants. Second baseman takes two stops, to, two steps towards the bag, opposite field. Mm-hmm. Second baseman takes two steps towards first, up the middle. He let off the Arietta game with a home run. Seems a while ago. He's money. Money. He's money. Money. He deserved an award. He did. He did. He did. Want to know my next award? What's your next award, Jim? I haven't thought of a name for it yet. Ooh! I wanted to go Hideki Matsui. It didn't make sense. Okay. Then I wanted to go Good Seal Team player. 5. Good ball That player. was blame. Then I wanted to go Worst Year of Jake's Life. Oh, been there. But I don't know what it was. Probably 2011, 2012. Oh, I thought it was when you were 5. Oh, no. Five was great. Okay. Best year of Jake's life. Okay. Best year of Jake's life award. Something about the number five. Yeah. Fifth year in the league. Fifth start. (laughs) What do you got, Jim? Five for five. Five for five. You know who I'm talking about? Luis Avalon. No. Close, though. Zach Britton. Zach Britton. Five save opportunities. Five saves. One hit. Zero earned runs. Yeah. Oh, did you guys forget that I used, was the best closer in the league one year? Yeah. If you go to the Google machine and you yeah. type in best year of a closer ever, my name will pop up. Yeah, I'll Probably be Probably right behind Gagne or who's the other guy? I'll be there. Uh, you know, I'm in there. Yeah. I'm uh, pretty good. I can do this, guys. Don't even worry. Yeah. Two saves in this series. Five on the season. Five innings pitched, one hit, one walk, and those are both in the same game, the scary game. Yeah. So in his last four outings, 
has just been perfect. Yeah. In his last four save attempts, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You know who doesn't do that? Chapman. Yeah. <laughs> Chapman doesn't do that. Yeah. He never gets one, two, three innings. Chapman's going to be a sneaky, nice piece to get back. You forget. Well, you forget the length. Especially on a seven inning game. And dude, I, like you, you mentioned piggyback ch- stuff, Nestor and Chad. I don't think they're going to do that with Chad this year. I think they want Chad towards the back end of the bullpen all year. I said Lasagna and King. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just you said Nestor and Chad. That's well, I'm all just I'm saying. saying. I'm just I, saying I'm, last year they I'm, did it. Yeah, I never said you said that. Don't, well, I don't think they're going to do it with Chad either. Yeah, I'm just saying Chad's Chad's not coming in before the fifth inning. We're done with that game. Chad's a back end of the bullpen guy. Well, um, unless it's like guys on base, close game. I mean, like playoffs when Batances came in. Yes, put like out a that. Fire. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah um, but, and even then, kind of no. We kind of need him towards the back end. No Canely. We're not as deep as we used to be. So, um, yeah, no, Britain's awesome. Eight pitch safe. Eight pitches, three outs. Wham, bam, thank you, man. That's what you say to a prostitute. They say. I don't think so. I think they'd be, they'd probably say no to you at that point. No, it's you say it afterwards. Oh, okay. Oh, that just makes them so sad. Yeah, it's not a nice thing to say. So sad. Don't say that to your prostitutes. Say, like, thank you. I'm giving out the No Funny Business Award. Okay. Wow. No Funny Business. You're giving this to Cashman? No, he's so funny business, low key. That's what I'm saying. You've he's been the most funny. Then why would you guess it? Then why been, would you guess it? I thought you were gonna tell him, don't do any funny business. I'm over God. it. Who's getting the no funny I'm not business award? Like this, Boyd, Monty. Oh, we got a lot of shit going on with our pitching staff. Yeah, Paxton is a shell of himself. Yeah, Hap looks awful. He's off the team. I already kicked him off. He's on the team. I like Cap as a dude. I'm not saying don't write him off because absolutely write him off, but Hap's going to pitch for us more. It's one start. Again, there's two outs, I think, in each inning when, when Monty gave up some, some outs. If Monty's next start, he has a bad day, we're having, like, very much bad times. Don't even worry about it. I'm just saying no funny business next start. They're blowing an air horn. You get your one double play, have some fun out there. Maybe a DJ and Glaber have a nice double play, and then Glaber like pretends to dance with DJ, and DJ's like, No, thank you. It's time to hit. We have a Monty quote here about the air horn. Okay. Well, which hey Jordan, which the, uh... is funny business. That is funny business. The fans outside the ballpark yelling and screaming, did they get your attention? Uh, no. Uh, the drum line yesterday was crazy. <laughs> um, but, I, I mean, I heard them, but it's no different than fans in the stands. I, I mean, I heard yesterday that their announcers were re- being really loud um, mid-pitch during Jay and other guys' uh, pitches. Um, and not doing the same for their team. Uh, so, I mean, it's kind of messed up that they're out there, but it is what it is. That's I mean, a bad look. Nice. That's a... Drumline got in Hap's head. He's fine. That's such a bad look. I mean, that makes me even more mad at Hap. Come on. Hap's out there telling his Stop teammates it. that the announcers, the Phillies announcers were being loud while he was pitching, but not – I don't – Hap didn't say that. That's what he just said. I think he just said during Hap's start. He didn't say Hap said that. Who else do you think was complaining? I think they were – their pitchers bored sitting in the field. Like, literally, that's all they're listening to. Eh. Don't put that on Hap. You can put a lot of stuff that's on That's a Hap. bad look for the Yankees in general. Play through the noise. It was a dumb question. And Monty said no, and then he just gave a Monty answer. Then he said that Whole the other pitchers moved. were complaining. He said he didn't think it was as bad as it was for him. Either way. No funny business. No funny business. I heard yesterday their announcers were being really loud mid-pitch during Jay and other guys' pitches and not doing the same for their team. It's kind of messed up that they're out there, but it is what it is. Bad luck. It's whatever. Keep it moving. 
No funny business for Monty. No funny business next start. It's a bad time if Monty has a bad next start. You know it's a really bad time? It's a really bad time. If Cole has a bad start. But not even because no, you're like whatever. Because you just know it's fine. Yeah. Like he's he's earned one and a half this year. Yeah. Is that all? Guys we missed almost gave out an award to Higgy. He had a couple hits, but he also played bad defense. So I don't know. He was know. making Judge laugh though in the making dugout. Judge laugh today. Um I almost gave Higgy an award from last year, the when I was like worried about Romine, and then Romine basically said don't worry about it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Higgy kind of did that with the bat but The glove stuff was kind of unfortunate What was um, the award you gave out? Uh, Geo looks solid Geo's gonna Geo Remember how high we were on Geo Like a couple days ago? Still there I just, He just can't get another award He's been getting yeah. so many awards Collecting awards We did the whole outfield thing Loizaga looks solid My guy I'm telling you I'd really Daniels. really really rather Loizaga and King Or even Loizaga and Hale Over Hat. Like, I don't even think that's crazy to say. No, I think that's, like, uh, really accurate. But well, I don't think it's been good. I don't, think the, gonna, I don't think the Yankees are going to do it. They're not going to quit Hap. <sighs> They're not going to quit Hap. Um, I think they will for a week. I think the next Hap update you'll get is he had a bullpen session with Matt Blake, and it looked really good. And then he probably gets a start 12 days from now. Mm-hmm. Hope I'm kind of wrong. Again, I I very much want Clark in the mix. I hope the Yankees do too. Me three. Holder looks good. Bit my tongue on giving him an award. Wow. Yeah. All right. The Miss Award. Him and Voight combo him award. Him and Voight. Voight almost screwed him. Um, what's Holder? Four four and a half inning shutout, something like that. Keep He's it a guy. Rolling. It's a guy. Make it so I can butter knife out your whole year last year and you look great. <laughs> All right. That's the end of the show, guys. Thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it. A little long today, four game set and some big combos. Yeah. Very excited. We sat on those for uh, 12 hours before we got to, to talk about them. We're out. Thank you. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. <laughs> <laughs>